Good evening and welcome to WEVN Sports. I'm Annabeth Fernandez. And I'm Allie Evans. Let's dive right into tonight's top stories. NFL viewers were in for a ride on Sunday as it marked the NFL's longest day since the 1970 merger. Comparable to a viewing marathon, the day of football lasted for 15 hours and 37 minutes. Due to weather delays, the last game of the day between the Cowboys and the Steelers started later than expected, leaving fans watching until 1 in the morning. In an NFL bombshell, the New York Jets have fired head coach Robert Sala. Jets owner Woody Johnson announced Sala's termination just this morning. The shocking news comes after the Jets' lackluster start to this season. They currently sit at 2-3 and three after losing to the Vikings in London. The 45-year-old served as New York's head coach for nearly four years after being hired in 2021. Johnson has attributed the team's inability to meet expectations as the reason for the firing. Defensive coordinator Jeff Ulbrich will be the interim head coach for the time being. Rookie quarterback Jaden Daniels set a rookie record for a single game completion percentage with 91.3% of his passes being received. This is the best percentage by a rookie quarterback in league history, surpassing the previous record by Dak Preston in 2016. Thanks to his efforts, the Washington Commanders are 4-1 for the first time since 2008. Patriots star safety Jabril Peppers was arrested Saturday in Braintree on drug and assault charges. The veteran defensive back did not play in the past Sunday loss to the Miami Dolphins after initially being listed as questionable. Patriots head coach Gerard Mayo addressed the team's need to wait for further information on the arrest before any potential punishment. The 29-year-old was arraigned on Monday in Quincy and pled not guilty to all of the charges. Peppers' next court date is scheduled for November 22nd, though he has waived his right to appear in court. We now head to Kira Lancia with more on the NFL. Thanks, Allie. This Sunday, the New England Patriots added another loss to their 1-4 season when the Patriots hosted the Miami Dolphins. The game was close, but the Patriots ended up losing 15-10. The Pats almost made a comeback in the fourth quarter when wideout Jalen Polk appeared to have made a game-winning touchdown catch. Polk, however, was ruled out of bounds for a continuous toe-to-heel motion during the attempted touchdown. The Minnesota Vikings remain undefeated coming out of their 23-17 win over the New York Jets this past weekend. This was Viking quarterback Sam Darnold's worst game of the season, with Darnold not throwing a single touchdown. Darnold also almost doubled the number of incomplete passes he threw. Despite this, the Vikings' performance was still good enough to continue their 5-0 streak. New England Patriots' Drake May will be replacing previous starting quarterback Jacoby Brissett starting this Sunday. When asked to assess Brissett's performance as of late, coach Gerard Mayo said, quote, it just wasn't good enough. New England's offensive line has not been strong this season, as they have lost four games in a row since their opening win against the Bengals. May outperformed Brissett during the preseason and will now get his time on the field during Week 6's game against the Houston Texans. That's all I have for the NFL. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Kira. Now we head to Pittsburgh for highlights of the Steelers' late-night matchup against the Dallas Cowboys. Sunday night football kicked off much later than expected after a nearly two-hour rain delay. But by 9.45, Cowboys and Steelers were suited up and were ready to go. After exchanging a few field goals, Dak Prescott threw an end zone interception on a pass intended for CeeDee Lamb to Dante Jackson. Entering the third quarter, Pittsburgh hit the end zone first on a 16-yard touchdown from Fields to Connor Hayward, putting the Steelers up by four. The fourth quarter rolls around and Dallas responds with a beautiful deep right pass to Rico Dowell, putting the Cowboys back on top. Late in the fourth quarter, Pittsburgh had a response with a six-yard touchdown for tight end Pat Fryermuth. Oh, but Dallas had the last laugh. On a fourth and goal with the game on the line, Dak fires a short pass to Jalen Tolbert for the game winner with 20 seconds left. The Dallas Cowboys now improve to 3-2, while the Pittsburgh Steelers fall to 3-2. More of tonight's top stories after the break. Thanks for sticking around. Let's get back into the news. The Miami Heat announced that they will be honoring longtime player, coach, and current president of the Heat, Pat Riley, by naming their court in his honor. The team announced their dedication to Riley, stating the team would now be playing on the quote, Pat Riley Court at Kaseya Center. Riley has been a member of Miami's storied franchise for 30 seasons, both as a coach and executive. The team will be unveiling the newly dedicated court on opening night. 
History was made on Sunday night as LeBron James and Bronny James became the first father-son duo to play in the NBA. Their first game together was the LA Lakers preseason game against the Phoenix Suns. This game coincidentally took place on Bronny's 20th birthday, emphasizing how much of an accomplishment this is as LeBron enters his 22nd season in the NBA. The father-son duo will kick off their first ever season together with their game against the Minnesota Timberwolves on October 22nd. Now off to Lana Gustafson for more on the NBA. Thank you, Annabeth. The Los Angeles Clippers announced P forward P.J. Tucker will not be returning after a decision was made during preseason. Tucker is an NBA veteran of 13 seasons, playing for the LA Clippers, Phoenix Suns, and six other teams. He appeared in just 28 games for the Clippers last season, averaging 15 minutes of playing time. His game point average was 1.6, the lowest of his career. Previously a member of the Philadelphia 76ers, Tucker joined the Clippers in November 2023 as part of a trade deal with James Harden. It is unclear whether Tucker, at age 39, plans to join another team before this year's season. Rudy Gobert, Minnesota Timberwolves center, fired back at critics who said he didn't deserve the 2023 NBA Defensive Player of the Year award. Shaquille O'Neal is one of Gobert's loudest critics, saying he thinks Gobert is one of the worst players in the league and doesn't deserve his $250 million salary. In an interview with Sports Kita, Gobert slammed media man manipulation and perception, telling his critics to quote, just look at the numbers. He responded to Shaq directly on social media. Gobert was key to the Timberwolves' run at the Western Conference Finals last year and hopes to be, quote, the best defensive team in the league. The Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame announced its class of 2024 inductees this week. The 13 nominees will be enshrined at a celebration in Springfield, Massachusetts on October 12th. The North American Committee spans decades of NBA greatness, from 47-year-old Vince Carter to 69-year-old Walter Davis. The lineup includes revered coaches Bo Ryan of the Wisconsin Badgers and Chauncey Billups of the Portland Trailblazers. Michael Cooper and Charles Smith round out the North American Committee, and Simone Augustus represents the Women's Committee, with Dick Barnett joining as the Veterans Committee inductee. Tickets for the 2024 Hall of Fame Enshrinement Weekend festivities are now available. That's all I have for NBA News. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Lena. Now we head to the highlights of a premier WNBA playoff matchup between the New York Liberty and the Las Vegas Aces. The Liberty and the Aces played for their spot in the playoffs. Brianna Stewart goes for the layup when she is denied by Aja Wilson, causing a foul against Stewart. We get a quick redemption soon as Sabrina Inesco goes for the deep three, making the point lead up by nine. We see a great movement with the team here as Vandersloot goes for the basket, kicks it out to Jones for a three, which she continues to do without this, throughout this game as we see Fivich pass it back out to Jones for another three, helping the Liberty gain their spot in the playoffs. The New York Mets defied expectations with their game three win against the Milwaukee Brewers. They will now advance in the playoffs for the first time since 2015. First baseman Pete Alonso is credited with get hitting a go-ahead three-run homer in the ninth inning to lead the Mets to their historical 4-2 win. The Mets will face the Philadelphia Phillies in the National League Division Series. Postseason baseball is heating up, and so are the fans. Sunday's Game 2 of the Padres vs. Dodgers NLDS Series featured heavy tensions between Dodgers fans and Padres players. The drama began when the Los Angeles crowd began throwing baseballs at Padres left fielder Jerickson Profar. The fan behavior soon escalated with many spectators throwing trash and other items onto the field and at Padres players. At one point, the game was delayed for 10 minutes to sort out the situation. San Diego went on to beat the Dodgers 10-2. The two rivals suit up to battle again for Game 3 tonight at 9. It's time for our last commercial break of the show. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back to WEBN Sports. Jessica Campbell became the first woman to coach an NHL team. Having been a skating coach and then an assistant coach for the German men's national team, Campbell prepares to become the first woman to be a full-time assistant coach in the NHL. She will make history in her head coaching debut in the Kraken season opener against the St. Louis Blues. Former first-round draft pick Jakub Vrana is back with the Washington Capitals after signing a one-year $775,000 contract. The veteran Ford was originally drafted by the Capitals in 2014. He was traded to the Detroit Red Wings in 2021 and then to the St. Louis Blues in 2023. During his time with the Capitals, Verona helped the team win their 2018 Stanley Cup. Let's head to Anderson Free for more on the NHL. Thanks, Allie. 
After months of negotiating, the Boston Bruins and goaltender Jeremy Swayman were finally able to agree upon an eight-year, $66 million extension. This signing comes almost a week after it was reported that the Bruins offered him an eight-year contract totaling $64 million. According to Swayman's agent, Louis Gross, this offer was refuted as he claims no such offer was made. Last year, Swayman made the All-Star team, having a 916 save percentage, a 2.53 goals against average, and finished seventh in the Vesna Trophy votings for the league's best goaltender. It is unclear whether or not Swayman will start for the Bruins right away, as it was announced on Sunday that Jonas Corposalo could be the goaltender come opening night. The Bruins season opens tonight against the defending Stanley Cup champion Florida Panthers at Amarant Bank Arena. The New Jersey Devils completed a two-game sweep of the Buffalo Sabres in Prague for the NHL's opening games. Devils forward Paul Cotter led both teams in scoring, putting up a goal in each of the games and totaling three points for the series. The Buffalo Sabres were limited to just one goal in each of their two games due to strong goaltending performances by Jacob Markstrom and Jake Allen, who both put up impressive performances. Buffalo's lone goals in the series were netted by 21-year-old defenseman Owen Power and forward Tage Thompson. Both of these teams will play on Thursday as the Sabres will take on the Los Angeles Kings at the Key Bank Center and the Devils will face the Toronto Maple Leafs at the Prudential Center, both at 7 p.m. The Utah Hockey Club has named forward Clayton Keller as the franchise's first ever captain. The 26-year-old played eight seasons with the Arizona Coyotes before the franchise moved to Utah for this upcoming season. The organization has not had a captain since 2021 when defenseman Oliver ekman Larson was the captain for three seasons before being traded to the Vancouver Canucks in the 2021 offseason. The Utah Hockey Club kick off their annual season tonight against the Chicago Blackhawks at the Delta Center at 10 p.m. That's all I have for NHL. Back to you both at the desk. Thanks, Anderson. The New York Liberty eliminated the Las Vegas Aces on Sunday as they now advance into the WNBA Finals. The Aces were on their way to win a third consecutive championship before the Liberty's victory. The Liberty claimed the best of five series 3-1 with their 72-62 point win. New York is hoping to make history by winning the franchise's first title. Liberty will play against the winner of the semifinal match between the Minnesota Lynx and Connecticut Sun. After an electric win over the Georgia Bulldogs a week ago, the Crimson Tide have fallen. In stunning fashion, the Vanderbilt Commodores took down number one ranked Alabama on Saturday in a historic college football upset. The Vanderbilt's victory was their first ever win versus an AP top five team and their first time beating Alabama in 40 years. After the loss, Alabama dropped to number six in the AP poll with their next matchup being against the South Carolina Gamecocks on Saturday. We've reached the end of our show for the night. Come back next week for more. I'm Annabeth Fernandez. And I'm Allie Evans. Have an excellent night.